The presidential primary, the San Diego mayoral race, congressional races, one major state proposition and a whole lot of local measures, all part of Super Tuesday in San Diego County. Good evening. Welcome to this special edition of News 8. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. And I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. The polls opened at 7 o'clock this morning and they will remain open until 8 tonight. Let's get an update from the registrar of voters on county turnout so far. News 8's Lamore Abrams is live with the latest. Lamore. Hi guys, it is busy here at the registrar's office and getting busier by the hour as more people get off work. Now we are right here in front of the line, right here where voters are getting their ballot if they don't already have one and taking the ballot inside the voting room. We can't show you past this, this is confidential stuff, but we can tell you there's been a steady stream of voters here since polls opened at 7 o'clock this morning. And there is a lot that's new this year. First, if you haven't already done so, you're still able to register to vote and cast your ballot today. You can do so here at the registrars in Kearney Mesa or at one of four satellite voting stations in the county. So far, though, the largest turnout has been voters dropping off mail-in ballots. The registrar's office has counted close to 400,000 that were mailed in, leaving about a million still holding on to those mail ballots as of yesterday. Well, this afternoon, the registrar of voters, Michael Vu, tells me it's nice to see voters turning them in here at the registrar's office and at polling places, 1,548 precincts across the county. The registrar is also seeing lots of voters asking for replacement ballots today if they voted for a presidential candidate no longer in the race. They can get a replacement if they still have their mail-in ballot in hand, but not if they've already voted. Take a listen. But technically and legally, we'll be counting every candidate that's on the ballot. And if they wanted to change that vote for the candidate that's no longer in the race, they're stuck. If you have cast your ballot already, there's nothing more that you can do. You cannot revote, and there's no redo. Uh, if you have your mail ballot in hand, then yes, then you can uh, re surrender that ballot or turn that at your polling place, your assigned polling location, or at any one of the satellite locations, or here at the Registrar Voters Office. And back live or right here in front of the line, you'll see it's getting busy here at the registrar's office. A lot of attention on the presidential primary, but there are key local, state, and congressional races, as well as a big statewide measure on the ballot, Prop 13. And voters seem to be excited about them all. Four more hours left to vote before polls close, and no excuses besides the fact that it is absolutely gorgeous outside. California law requires employers to pay you for two hours if you want to get out of work and get out to vote. Back to you, Carl. Hello and Barbara Lee. All right, Lamore, thank you. No reports of long voting lines here in San Diego County, but look at this. This is the scene to the north of us. This was about 2 o'clock this afternoon outside of a polling location in Pacific Palisades, and that wasn't the only place. Lines were reported at various locations across Los Angeles County. California is among 14 Super Tuesday states, and former Vice President Joe Biden is hoping to capitalize on his big South Carolina win and a wave of new endorsements. But Senator Bernie Sanders says he's still the best candidate to win the White House. Natalie Brand reports from the Super Tuesday state of Virginia. Carlo and Barbara Lee, while it will still be hours before we get a true sense of how voters across all Super Tuesday states felt about the individual candidates, we're getting an early look at what motivated them. As millions of Super Tuesday voters headed to the polls across the country, health care was a top issue on their minds, according to CBS News exit polls. But electability is a big priority, with a clear majority of voters saying they prefer a nominee who can beat President Trump to one they agree with on major issues. On the campaign trail, former Vice President Joe Biden is spending the day in California after he won endorsements from three former presidential hopefuls. Senator Bernie Sanders cast his ballot in his home state of Vermont. We have the grassroots movement all over this country. Up to now, we have not gone, I believe, some two million doors. While the 11th hour departure of two candidates could start to consolidate party moderates, voters remain divided over who should top the Democratic ticket. I admire Bernie very much, and I think that he has the best shot at getting the current president out of the office. After seeing who was left, I felt like um, Joe Biden was our safe bet. Billionaire Mike Bloomberg skipped earlier contests and bet big on Super Tuesday. Now he's already in Florida, which votes later this month. You don't have to win states, you have to win delegates. Do you want a contested convention? I, I, 
Well, I don't think that I can win any other ways. Senator Elizabeth Warren has also hinted at a contested convention. I always figured it was going to be a long, long race and that it was unlikely that anybody was going to get a majority, although I'm out there fighting for it every day. She voted in her home state, Massachusetts, this morning. She spends the evening in Michigan, one of several states voting next week. More than 1,300 delegates are up for grabs tonight across all the states voting. That's about a third of the total. But keep in mind, they are awarded proportionally based on performance. So that means margins matter, not just first place finishes, but also a strong second or third could earn you delegates. Will also be interesting watch the impact of all that money that Michael Bloomberg has poured into this race in advertising more than $230 million across Super Tuesday states, more than 77 million in California alone. In Virginia, I'm Natalie Brand for News 8. In just a few days since the South Carolina primary, the Democratic presidential race has shifted dramatically. Tom Steyer, Pete Buttigieg, and Amy Klobuchar dropped out, with Buttigieg and Klobuchar immediately endorsing former Vice President Joe Biden. To talk about this more is our Steve Price with News 8 political analysts, Laura Fink and Wendy Patrick. Steve? Yeah, Carlo and Barbara Lee, the polls here in California don't close for another four hours or so, but already so many interesting conversations have started when it comes to what is going to happen here in our state. And I think you guys hit the nail on the head. We're talking about three major candidates who dropped out right before Super Tuesday. So, Laura Fink, let me get to you first because you are a strategist who deals with a lot of Democratic candidates. Who does this help when you've got Buttigieg, Klobuchar, and Steyer dropping out before Super Tuesday, especially here in California. If you can think for a moment of this as a normal primary, presidential primary, think about it as at warp speed, because we saw candidates dropping out, endorsing an opponent, and campaigning for them all in the same day. Now, that's pretty normal to see the field narrowing, but all at the same time the night before a historic Super Tuesday election like we've never seen before. Now, that all benefits Biden, even with 40% of California's ballots already in. He has momentum going in and he's ready to catch up with Bernie. Now, Wendy, you're more of a conservative strategist, so let me ask you, you know, if you are Bernie Sanders or you are Joe Biden, who do you think this helps? And if you are the Republicans, Donald Trump, who do you hope you're going up against? You know, I think Donald Trump is going to be pleased regardless of who he goes up against. And I think it'll be an interesting race um, for different reasons if it is Biden versus Bernie. But here's what I think has happened as far as the dynamic changing with these dropouts. And many people are looking at the race and saying it's about time because those candidates were not going to win. But Biden had a huge bump from South Carolina. And he did because it was unexpected. You know, margins matter. People thought, oh, it's going to be close. He's not doing very well but the fact that he won so big reinvigorated his campaign to the extent to where he is now speaking with authority he sounds confident he has regained a little bit of his momentum but will momentum translate into math Bernie's got the math on his side right now and that's why he is still even given that everybody is endorsing his opponent he's still the candidate to watch so is tonight a big night then for Joe Biden well, it's his to lose in terms of catching up to Bernie Sanders, not overcoming Bernie Sanders. How close can he catch up? Bernie Sanders is probably still going to pull it off, but delegate-wise, is Biden really going to have enough to be a formidable opponent at the convention? All right, let's talk real, real quickly about San Diego mayor's race. Uh, Todd Glory seems to be leading in the polls. Who's going to be number two? So when we head to November, we know who he's going against. That's that's the big question. We have businesswoman and technocrat Barbara Bree aiming to make it a top two primary between two Democrats in November. But Scott Sherman, who I'm sure she probably thinks is a little bit of a spoiler, the big R by his name. I think that there it's going to be a very tight race. We may not even know tonight who's going to come out, um, but it would be absolutely historic to have two Democrats come, go, come fall. That will be a big race. And then real quickly for you, the 50th race. Uh, Camp in a jar probably going to get the most votes just because he's the lone Democrat. But who between Daryl Issa 
and Carl DeMaio do you think is going to be number two? I got to tell you, you know, there have been few contests that have been cliffhangers in the way that this one is for many of the reasons you, that we discuss all yeah. of the time, given the given what both of them bring to the set. So I cannot wait. I hope you ask me that in a couple of hours, <laughs> because once those first results come out, uh, then I'm going to answer your question with gonna a little be, more confidence. It's going to be a long night for all three <laughs> of us, I have a feeling. Carlo and Barbara, a long night for you guys as well, but we are ready to go. It's going to be a fun one, and uh, be sure to check back with us to hear more thoughts coming up later.